Hello people from the future, welcome to Normalize Nerd. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the Monte Carlo simulation. I will explain what it is and how you can code Monte Carlo on your own. There will be interesting card games and visualizations. So without any further ado, let's get started. Here I have got an ordinary deck of 52 cards. Let's shuffle this deck. First, I want to ask an easy question. What is the probability that there will be at least two kings right next to each other in the shuffle deck? Remember, there can be more than two consecutive kings and they can appear in any order. Let me give you a couple of examples. We can have two consecutive kings, three consecutive kings or four consecutive kings or even something like this where we have two pairs of consecutive kings separated by any number of cards. You get the idea, right? Now, how do you find the probability? Pause right now if you want to give it a go. Let's try the analytical method first. So, we want to find the probability of at least two consecutive kings. Well, this is the same as finding the probability of the complement event where no two kings are next to each other. To compute this, I'm first taking the kings out of the deck. Now we have 48 cards. Let's place them. Here each vertical bar represents a non-king card. Now we have to place the kings. We can easily see that there are 49 positions to place our four kings such that no two kings will appear side by side. So in how many ways can we do this? Yes, it's 49p4. P because each king is different. And we can arrange the remaining cards in 48 factorial ways. Combining them gives this. Ok, so now we need the total number of ways to arrange the complete deck, which is just 52 factorial. So the probability of getting no two consecutive kings becomes this. Subtracting this bad boy from 1 gives us the desired answer. Easy right? Now let's use the Monte Carlo. But what exactly is it? To be honest. There is no proper definition of Monte Carlo or at least I didn't find any. Actually, Monte Carlo is a general term for a vast range of algorithms that in some sense deal with either finding or optimizing a probability. Most of them share three common steps which are you need to select data points randomly from your sample space or domain a large number of times. Then you will perform a deterministic computation on each selected data point. Finally, you will combine the results. Let's see how we can write a Monte Carlo simulation for our problem. First, obviously we need our domain and that is the deck of cards. Then we need to repeatedly shuffle our deck. We are doing it for n number of times. Each shuffle gives us a random data point. The random numbers that I am generating here are pseudo random numbers because true randomness cannot be generated via any machine it can be only found in nature and that is really time consuming so we are gonna be happy with our friend pseudo random numbers here the deterministic computation is just finding if the shuffle deck contains at least two consecutive kings or not i have done this by using the king king function you can pause here if you want to study the function trust me it's really simple now we need to combine the results. As you can see, I am adding 1 to the result if the shuffle deck meets our condition. So after n trials, we will have the count of how many times our condition was met out of n times. Now to find the percentage probability, I just took the ratio and multiplied by 100. Let's test the simulation. Here's the table to keep track of the results and the axis. Let's begin. Wow, just look at the value when I did this for 10 million times. It's so close to the original analytical value. 
and you can see as n increases the probability converges to the actual value. This is because of the law of large numbers which says if we perform a random experiment a large number of times then the result converges to the expected value. For those of you who are wondering why I kept adding more significant figures after the decimal point as n increases, try removing the decimal point and think what the number tells you. Yeah, it's just the number of times our condition was met. Ok, so now we know that Monte Carlo works. Let's try this in a more difficult problem. Again we have our shuffle deck. This time I want to find what is the probability that at least one king and one queen will be next to each other or at most one card away. It doesn't matter who comes first, the king or the queen. Here are some examples. We can have a pair like this or a card in between a pair or like this or this and so on. There are simply too many possibilities. If you want to try this by analytical method then best of luck. I certainly don't. I'm not saying it's impossible but it's really hard right? So let's unleash our weapon aka the Monte Carlo simulation. We can actually use most of the previous code with a minor change. We just need to replace the king king function with this king queen function. The logic is fairly simple. I'm just checking if a king queen pair appears or they are separated by one card. So let's start the simulation. If you want to make a guess then do it right now. Ok, so after 10 million trials, we can quite confidently say that the answer is around 73.5%. Wow, that's unexpectedly high, isn't it? Now some of you might be thinking, ok, this technique is quite good but at the end of the day it's just a simulation. What if we are super unlucky and somehow end up with the random numbers that lead to a wrong result? Well, when you are doing it for 10 million times, the chances of that happening is really, really low. And we can actually compute error percentage too. But that's a topic for another video. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Keep supporting. Stay safe and thanks for watching.